Hi, I'm Ellen Hannock. I'm Senior Fellow and Leader of PPIC's work on water policy. The current drought has called attention to the importance of California's water system for the state's economic, social, and environmental health. Today, I'd like to talk to you about a new study we've done that looks at a key ingredient for successful water management, adequate funding. California's water system provides many vital services to the state's residents, supplying clean water for homes, farms, and other businesses, protecting the quality of rivers, lakes, and beaches, preventing loss of life and property from devastating floods, and safeguarding the health and habitat of fish and other wildlife. Delivering these services cost-effectively usually requires managing various activities in a coordinated way. In policy circles, it's often assumed that our water system faces critical funding gaps, but until now, there really hasn't been a clear picture of what we're spending, where the real problems lie, and the options California has to fix what's broken. We brought together a team of experts to tackle these questions. Here are some of our key findings. The first point is that this is a large, mostly locally funded system. In addition to several state and federal agencies, thousands of local and regional agencies are responsible for different aspects of water management. In total, we're spending over $30 billion annually on water investments and system upkeep. Most people would be surprised to learn that the vast majority of these funds, about 85%, come from local sources, especially local water and sewer bills. The state only provides about 11% of total funding, and the federal government just 4%. Second finding is that we found some bright spots. California's urban water and wastewater utilities are in relatively good fiscal health. A key reason why the state's economy will largely be able to weather the current drought is that these utilities have undertaken significant investments to improve water supply reliability over the past couple of decades. They've been able to do this by raising rates to support these investments. Now for some bad news. California's utilities face looming challenges to funding further improvements in water conservation and supply diversification because of a 1996 constitutional amendment that requires water rates to specifically be linked to the services for each property. This makes it hard to pay for activities that are interrelated. For instance, capturing stormwater, which can boost water supplies while improving water quality of rivers and beaches. This law also jeopardizes utilities' ability to provide lifeline discounts to low-income households. We also identified some areas where California's current system is already failing because of insufficient funds. Affordability is a key obstacle to providing safe drinking water in rural communities that have contaminated groundwater wells and many low-income residents. And in other areas, including flood protection, stormwater pollution management, and watershed management, the obstacle is the current legal system. It's now too difficult to raise enough funds locally because the Constitution requires agencies to seek direct voter approval, often at the high hurdle of two-thirds majority of local voters, for any new funding. In all, we estimate that California needs to raise another two to three billion dollars annually to fill these critical gaps. This would require increasing water system spending by seven to 10 percent above current levels or about $150 to $230 per household annually. This is a fixable problem, but only if we think beyond the approach that policymakers have been focused on, which is new state bonds. Over the past decade or so, state water bonds have provided a welcome boost, but at most they've only provided about $1 billion per year, or less than half of the funding gap. Because they're repaid from the state's general fund, state bonds also compete with many other vital services like education and social services. To restore fiscal health to our water system, the legislature will need to go beyond bonds by improving new fees and special taxes dedicated to supporting the water system. Californians also need to address the unintended consequences of a suite of constitutional reforms introduced since the late 1970s. These reforms have made some welcome changes by improving transparency and accountability of our water system, but they're also jeopardizing local government's ability to manage water responsibility. In closing, it's good to keep in mind that although filling the funding gaps in our water system may seem daunting, it's within our reach. With a bold, concerted effort by state and local leaders, Californians can sustainably manage this critical resource, despite increasing water scarcity, population growth, and climate change. Thank you.